firstly, going back to the beginning, kind of growing up, did you grow up with a positive body image? What was what were your what were your confidence levels like growing up? I think my confidence levels are actually like zero. <laughs> really? I grew up really, <clears throat> really uncomfortable with my body. Only when I was like doing theatre, when I was like acting, I was like totally happy to like make a fool of myself and have fun. I was really good at sport as well, but I was just really uncomfortable with the body I was I had as a child and a teenager. And what was that? Was that your height? Was it? I think it was it was just a mixture. Like you know. I would grow in stages and then it would be like, I'd be pudgy and then I'd be skinny and then I'd be pudgy, like, because I'm so tall, it was just, and I always loved food, so, um, you know, I'd always, you know, be obsessed with food. The girls around me, you know, there was, in my opinion, the girls around me were also beautiful and, you know, or did they make up and I was kind of like, a bit like a tomboy, so it just, for me, it was, it was quite, I had a quite an uncomfortable childhood. I was much better as a young adult. <laughs> yeah. And you've talked about your, because you have sisters, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, were there always those comparisons as well? It's so crazy, like, we had the same mum, we had the same food, and we have all have like completely different body types. It's not always in your control. You know, my sister's really skinny, and she would eat the same amount as me and my other sister, and I was always kind of like a normal area size. And then my other sister was always just, um, obsessed with food to the dangerous point where, right. you know, she had a food addiction. You obviously had your straight modelling days. During that time, what length did you go to to maintain that kind of size zero, size two that you that you felt you had to be? Well, the thing is, I couldn't actually get to the size that they wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. Even at my lightest, I just couldn't get there. I, I really tried, like, I generally really tried and I just think it was um, my bone structure or or I don't know, I just, I think I couldn't give the food up enough. I'd get home from school and I'd just be starving. I'd be so hungry and I would only allocate myself certain meals and I, I was vegan as well, so I wouldn't eat any animal products, which was both for environmental and animal reasons and also purely and utterly because it controlled what I ate. And it would make, you know, no one could force me to eat. You know, mm, I'd go out to restaurants and they'd be like, oh, I can only eat the salad because I'm a vegan. So. I used it as an excuse. You know, my parents somewhat knew, but they all kind of wanted me to be a successful model. So they were all kind of like not saying anything because I didn't want to hurt my feelings. Or they also knew that, you know, models were skinnies. And were you doing it because at that point you believed that skinny equaled beautiful? I thought that you had to be skinny to be beautiful. I thought yeah. I would never be beautiful at this size. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like, mine are not like my sister. You know, mentally, when you're on a diet for that long, you you just kind of turn psycho. I think I would have been a hell child to deal with. And then tell me about the turning point and what happened and when you realised that there was this other career where you could have the body that was natural for you. My body was just destined to be what I am now. Like it just wouldn't let me do any other thing. And I started seeing photos of this model in Australia on buses and she was like way curvier than me. And I was like, what is going on? And then an art director suggested me for a plus client. I didn't even question it at that stage. It had been so long since I worked properly. I was like, whatever. If I'm getting paid, it's fine. And then after that, I yeah, contacted an agency and then I Googled plus size modeling and then I saw pictures of Christy Wren in Vogue. What was the first job where you realized that this was gonna be a success? You know, over the years, even, even when I was plus size modeling, even in the beginning, I was still very uncomfortable with my body. Like I didn't really understand why people wanted to shoot me at that size. I did my French L cover and that was a crazy experience because I went to Paris and I had a fitting and it was all designer clothes and they were so excited and I was like, why are they excited? And then we did the shoot and I was like, they're gonna drop me, they're gonna cancel me any moment. And the shots looked great and I was like, wow, you know, a plus size model can look good in these clothes. How do you feel about the term plus size model? You know, in the beginning, I didn't mind getting called it. I was like, yay, it's fine. I was like, and it's been a community that's really, you know, represented me well and, and loved me and really helped me. But in, I'm not a plus size person and I'm a model. I, you know, I, I don't think I need that plus size in front of it.